Good afternoon, everyone. It is 5.31 p.m. Uh, today is Monday, April 24, 2023, and this is the Building and Finance and Audit Committee meeting, and I call this meeting to order. Uh, roll call. Uh, Mercurio Martinez, absent. Lupita Cepeda. Present. Jorge Delgado, present. Esteban Rangel, present. Karina Elizondo, absent. Uh, Tita Cantubela, absent. All right, we will move on to agenda item number three, the March 2023 financial report. Mr. Cesar Vela. Good evening, uh, board members, Dr. Ramirez. Uh, for the record, Cesar Vela, VP of Finance and Administration. Uh, included with your board packets, you received a copy of the March 2023 financial report. Uh, quickly uh, highlight the items uh, for the for the month. Uh, revenues, uh, general operating revenues as of March uh, 31st, 2023, stand at 62 million five hundred seventy-two thousand eight hundred twenty-nine. That's 94.4 uh, percent of our projected revenue or budgeted revenue. Uh, we don't have any variances to report. Uh, what I do have to report is that we are going to be hitting our projected uh, budget of 66.2 million. Uh, currently, right now, we have a remaining amount of 3.7 that we are expecting to collect uh, in the last uh, five months of operations. Um, as far as the only item to, that has been noted in the past is the interest revenue. Again, uh, we budgeted 300,000. We're at 1.3 uh, million, uh, and that's attributed to the increase in the uh, interest rates that we've seen uh, this this year. Um, pending out of the revenue line items are the two payments that we need to make uh, for one for the uh, revenue bonds of uh, 3.6 million, and the other one for the maintenance tax note of 2.8 million, and those are uh, done at the end of July. Uh, again, uh, we are expecting to collect the remaining balance of uh, 3.7, like I mentioned. As far as the expenses for the year, um, we have uh, expenses of 33,776,543. That's 50.95 percent of our budget. Uh, this is uh, in line to where we where at at last year. Uh, last year's uh, budget was at 52.13 percent. Uh, again, no major variances. Uh, we will be uh, going through the exercise of identifying savings uh, in the next couple of months uh, to determine how much uh, of, of the uh, budget will be available uh, for the um, next year's budget, uh, possibly using some of those savings for equipment purchases. Uh, again, um, we are in line uh, with what we we're uh, projecting for the fiscal year. As far as the other items, uh, other, but, uh, other uh, funds uh, under the special appropriations, uh, the revenue for the year is 108,666, 44.4% uh, of the budget. 
uh, expenses for the year are 100,496, 41.4%. Uh, we have a net increase to the fund balance of 8,170 as of March 31st. As far as uh, as far as auxiliary services, uh, revenues are at one million two hundred three thousand five hundred one, eighty four point four percent of our budget. Uh, expenses are at four hundred sixty two thousand four hundred eighty five, or thirty two point four percent of our budget, for an net increase to the fund balance of seven hundred eighty one thousand one hundred thirty. Uh, restricted funds, uh, we have uh, revenues and expenses of twenty one million. Eight hundred sixty-five thousand three ninety-four for the year. Uh, the facilities master plan phase three. Uh, we began the fiscal year with a balance of seventeen million four hundred ninety-eight thousand nine hundred. Uh, we the uh, received interest revenue of two hundred ninety-nine thousand four sixty-eight. Uh, we are recording the LC contribution, the five million dollar contribution for the MFA HVAC upgrade project. Um, Expenditures for the year are six million four hundred seventy-seven thousand seven seventy. Uh, for a net change or a net decrease to the um, facilities master plan phase three fund balance of one million one seventy-eight three hundred two. So as of March thirty-first, we have a balance of sixteen million three hundred twenty thousand five ninety-eight. Uh, and again, those are already allocated to uh, projects. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, in tonight's uh, Agenda, we do have the GMAX for the uh, Law Enforcement Training Center uh, project. Uh, as far as tax collections, as of March 31st, we have collect, collected 93.21% of our tax levy. Uh, that totals 39,825,904 out of a tax levy of 42,728,810. Uh, again, our target is 99%. That is the amount that we budgeted for the fiscal year. Uh, we are currently on target to hit the 99%. Uh, we do have the last uh, five months of operations uh, still pending, and we feel that we will be reaching the 99% collection rate for the year. Uh, the last item is just an update on the general operating fund balance. Uh, we began the fiscal year with a $5 million fund balance. Uh, the uh, revenues for the year total $62,572,829. We have expenditures of $33,776,543. Uh, we are reflecting the two transfers out out of the general operating fund balance, uh, the $5 million to the MFA uh, HVAC upgrade project and the $1.8 million for the deferred maintenance uh, funds. Uh, so the net increase to the fund balance as of March uh, 31st, uh, we are showing a, a net change of $21,940,016. Again, we still have the five months of operations and that number obviously will uh, decrease as uh, we record the uh, expenditures for the last five months. Any questions on any other items? No, no questions from members of the committee. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Bella. All right, we'll move on to agenda item number four, the February 2023 quarterly investment report. Mr. Yes, uh, included uh, with the March uh, financial report is the uh, February 28, 2023 quarterly investment report. Uh, as at uh, February 28, we had a total investments and deposits of 136,905,305. Uh, the uh, demand deposits totaled $114,267,532. We do have a, a TBO uh, investment of $3,390,800 uh, and investment pools of $19,246,973. Uh, the uh, yields as of uh, at the end of February were for demand deposits, we were uh, receiving 3.75%. Both the Lone Star and the FIT investment pools were yielding 4.76 and 4.77, respectively. And the uh, US uh, TBO note was uh, is currently yielding 3.01%. Any questions on that? No questions from members of the committee? Bless you. Bless you. No. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Vela. Uh, we'll move on to agenda item number five, approval of Dell server purchase 
for Maine Campus Data Center, Mr. Vela. Yes, uh, board members, I want to defer to uh, Mr. Albert Chavez. Uh, he'll be presented this time. Good evening, members of the Finance and Audit Committee. Uh, for the record, Albert Chavez, Associate Vice President for Information Technology. For this particular item, we're requesting approval to purchase Dell servers for the main data center campus. Uh, this particular purchase, uh, the suggested vendor is SQL Data Systems. The total cost is $569,637.85, and it would be uh, purchased through a DIR contract, uh, DIR TSO 3763. Uh, for this particular purchase, uh, we currently have seven servers in, in our virtualized server environment. And due to increased capacity and new servers, uh, we're downsizing to five, uh, which is what's on the quote. Um, and the vendor SQL data system uh, will, is selling the equipment and also will be doing the installation. And for the expenditure, this expenditure is currently uh, allocated in the IT operating uh, fund. Thank you, Mr. Thanks, Mr. Any questions from members of the committee? No. I just have a question. That is the DIR charge or price? Yes, that's correct. Okay, that's all. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Travis. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to agenda item number six, approval of guaranteed maximum price for law enforcement training center project, Mr. Cesarella. So, members of the board, uh, this next item is going to uh, request the board uh, consideration and approval for the uh, Guaranteed maximum price for the law enforcement training center project. We have received the GMAX from Langdecker Construction of Texas uh, in the amount of $2,134,441.95. Uh, for the uh, law enforcement training center project, uh, the project called for renovations uh, to the South Campus Congressman Henry Cuella Protective Services. Center and the Academic and Advanced Technology Center, also known as Building C at the South Campus. The work that will be performed is uh, in the Protective Services Center. We are looking at adding a restroom facility, uh, as well as uh, doing work to the uh, basement, uh, repurposing the firing range, indoor firing range into a tactical training um, gym. Uh, the bulk of the work is going to be entailed in that specific area. Uh, we are going to need to do some lead abatement as well as uh, put brand new HVAC equipment in that area. Uh, we're also converting uh, one of the classrooms into the protective services. We're, we're adding space to that classroom. And on Building C, we're uh, accommodating a couple of offices and uh, spaces for the uh, distance learning uh, department. Um, the project is currently um, budgeted under the facilities master plan phase three. We had allocated a million six hundred and fifty thousand for this project. Uh, in order to uh, meet the GMAX, we're having to take 484,000 from the equipment line item of, of the uh, facilities master plan uh, allocation. Uh, with this um, amount of this transfer that will be utilized for this GMAX, we will only have about 8,000 uh, in that line item. Um, we had planned to uh, have a project to try to see if we could uh, furnish some of the, uh, some equipment or, or uh, furniture at the South Campus, but unfortunately, uh, because of the construction cost, we're going to have to allocate that uh, as part of the operating budget as we as we work through these projects. So again, to uh, be able to uh, meet the GMAX, we're having to utilize 484,000 of that line item. Any questions? Then that transfer is coming from the master facility plan phase three? That is correct, sir. So uh, both, both uh, projects, the uh, law enforcement training center as well as the equipment were already budgeted in the uh, facility master plan. Uh, basically, and on the um, on the value engineering, we're just removing all Armstrong ceiling clouds and addendum two lighting package. It has a fifty six thousand five hundred twenty five 
well, negative 56,525 and negative $277,767. That is correct, sir. We had to uh, uh, value engineer those items out so that we could bring the cost down to the project. And this contract is CMR fee. CMR fee is 7.10%, which includes, for the record, $141,498.95. What is that for? That is the uh, contract amount that the CMR uh, charges uh, with the as part of the agreement. On top of everything that there is. Yes. And he charges that for each project? That is correct. Can I get a list of all the fees that the CMR has charged yes, for sir. any and all projects for Master Facility Plan Phase 3? Yes, sir. Thank you. Have we asked if this is going to change or this is pretty much this is the final crisis. Now, on the electrical, 650000 are we changing everything in the basement? Um, let me um, refer that to uh, Mr. Cavazas. He has the director for this project and we'll provide some more information on that. Okay. Sorry, I missed the question. Electrical. There's a charge of $658,000. Yes, so that's lighting, power improvements for the two floors. Which is the basement? Yes. The basement, all the lighting that we're going to put in the basement, um, power, and um, then we're going to repurpose some of the rooms on. I'm sorry, sir. Can you say your name for the room? I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Guillermo Cavazos, Cavazos Architects. Um, then there's some improvements on the second floor to some of the lecture rooms. We're combining two lecture rooms, making them into one big one. And then we're we're doing some improvements uh, on another lecture room. And we're creating a new uh, men's and women's restroom. And we're repurposing some offices into a conference room and a director's office. So uh, that plus we are renovating um, some rooms in Building C. There's a classroom that's going to be converted into offices for the protective services program. So there's some different areas. Okay. What's the square footage for this building? Uh, off the top of my head, I'm not sure um, because um, you know we're 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 sort of doing like different portions of the building. Uh, I can get you that information, but I don't have it off the top of my head. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from? Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Vasos. All right, we'll move on to agenda item number seven, construction projects update, Mr. Romero Weiss. Good evening, I'm Otto Weiss for the record, project manager. Um, today we're bringing you an update uh, for, for the college for all the projects that we have going on. I've also included, uh, this will include all the uh, construction bond projects in phase three and all the physical plan projects as well. And these are all updates on every single one. Here's a list of all the projects that we currently have or currently working on. At the South Campus, we're working on the CDL driving pad, the dedication plaque, and the sign construction. We're currently going out for bids on the construction for the sign. Uh, so I'll go into each, each of these projects throughout my PowerPoint, so I won't elaborate too much on them. Uh, the diesel and auto collision shop expansion project, protective service, facility renovations, building C, uh, second floor, office renovations, and commercial driving simulated room. Uh, at Ford Mac, we have currently the ongoing asphalt seal coat, uh, parking lot uh, repairs, the MFA HVAC and chill water line plant upgrade project, 
Uh, we have renovations to P, uh, P4. Uh, that work is being done by other, uh, others, but I, I have it on my, on my report. Uh, P14, facility renovations to the Imaginarium project. P24, facility renovations, DPS office. The PNG bank uh, donated items and relocation to the Fort Mac campus. The Ruben Garcia facility interior renovations and roof improvement project. The Lamar Bruni Regatta Environmental Renovations and Facility Addition Project. Adesiga Facility Interior and Exterior Renovation Project. The Moore Building Covered Structure and Welding Courtyard Project. The old facility recommended for demolitions due to life safety, uh, both Bakery and P7 and 8. And the Red Cause Surveillance and Fiber Optic Project updates. So the, uh, the first slide, a uh, little description on the CDL uh, driving pad, dedication black and sign. Uh, you see a little sketch of what we plan to build to place the, uh, the dedication plaque. And then we have the final proof, which was approved uh, to go ahead and fabricate the, uh, the bronze plaque. Uh, we did numerous corrections to it, but uh, the company CTSW already is in production. Uh, estimated arrival time uh, for this plaque is six to eight weeks, and uh, the shipment of the uh, plaque will be coordinated two weeks prior to the completion of the plaque. So we have a line of communication open with the company right now. The diesel model collision shop expansion, uh, I think you all are familiar with the layout of the site plan. Uh, we did remove one of the buildings on the bottom part, which is a quick lane shop that's not included in the project. Uh, we've had numerous uh, coordinations with the city of Laredo with the, with the water lines. And we have a little sketch on the upper uh, right-hand corner uh, that uh, shows you the different water lines that we have around the, the campus. So we have a major loop. So we've had to identify certain uh, closing valves to, to be able to work on this project and also to realign some of the lines that are in the way uh, uh, that sit underneath the, the, the new expansions. So right now we're coordinating all that work. Uh, the protective service facility renovations in building C, second floor office renovations and commercial driving simulated rooms. You heard a little bit about the GMAX uh, that we brought or bringing to you for the board meeting for approval. I've uh, included a couple of slides of the equipment that arrived last week, and actually the slides at the bottom where the uh, simulators are actually being installed as we speak right now. These uh, people will be here for the next three days and go through uh, setups, trainings uh, with the instructors to go ahead and get them certified on these actual units that they're putting up. Uh, so we'll uh, visit with them tomorrow on the setup and make sure that everything is in place, and uh, they will then go on to different practices and different trainings uh, before they leave town on, on Wednesday. The asphalt uh, suitable parking lot repairs, uh, this scope has been uh, pretty much completed. We did have a uh, punch list uh, that was issued to the contractor. Uh, we will be reviewing the list of uh, punch list items to uh, inspect all of them to make sure that they've all been completed. And currently, the contract is still open. The MFA HVAC show water line plant upgrade project. Uh, we currently, uh, the scope of work for the new show water lines has been completed. The trench has been uh, backfilled. <laughs> and the cut of the, on, the, on the asphalt road has been asphalted. Some of the photographs on the bottom kind of show you that. The uh, new exterior border uh, unit has been placed uh, and installed, and the new piping uh, is currently in progress. All of the interior VA boxes, electrical controls, ducting modifications have been completed. The interior MFA HVAC units are scheduled to commence replacement starting on mid-May this year. Uh, and we will be working on the west side and east side of the facility. Uh, during the summer uh, to make sure that those units are in place before uh, our students and staff return in August. Uh, come August, after we have convocation, then uh, we will move to the center part of the uh, facility units and, and start work on those. Uh, 
So we'll have the facility up and running uh, in the middle uh, during the summer for different events that are currently scheduled. <clears throat> the uh, contractor and subcontractor and, and us over at the college uh, are holding bi-weekly meetings uh, with this uh, project right now. P4 facility renovations and your upgrade project. This work is being done by others. I didn't include it in, as part of uh, our report just because the facility is going under renovation. So you are able to see the new color that's added to the exterior of the building. And currently there is interior work uh, in progress right now. P14 facility renovations, the Imaginarium project. Uh, a couple of photographs of the interior work. Uh, one of them showing you uh, the larger room on the first floor. Uh, that is one of two uh, spaces that have the original wood floor of, of that facility, and we're having that wood floor redone. Uh, you see some of the tape uh, and float work, some of the suspended seating in place already with some of the lights. Uh, the bottom photograph, you see some of the wood floor that is currently going on uh, being placed on the second floor, uh, and we're waiting for painting to be done on the first floor to continue that, uh, that new floor uh, covering. Uh, the outside of the facility will be painted eventually. Uh, we're currently looking on how we're going to handle that, uh, but uh, that is also pending at this moment. How much more time do we have on this one? Um, we had a we had a visit uh, by the board members uh, from the Imaginarium. Um, they were talking about possibly like in September. Uh, I'd like to see if I can get it wrapped up before that. Uh, we're, so we're going to try to move aggressively and try to get somebody on the outside to work on, on the outside. We do have plans to still be working on the inside, but uh, we just don't have enough manpower. Uh, we have one gentleman with a helper, uh, and it's, it's, it's taking a little bit too long. And what what's happening is that it's holding back the contractor at the same time. So we're going to see how we can go ahead and, and, and progress on that and try to change uh, something so we go ahead and, and, and try to wrap up on that, on that project. I know that they, they need to move out of the mall. Uh, they do have an understanding with the mall right now, but uh, visiting with them during their visit, it kind of sounded like they wanted to try to move. Uh, and so we're going to go ahead and try to try to get that done. So I, if I may, uh, Friday I walked the facility with Mr. Rilla and, and Mr. Vice, and so my recommendation is that we go out and find an external contractor to come in and do the painting. It's taking too long. I know that in the past we've tried to use our own painter to do a lot of things, and we've tried to do a lot of things internally, but the time on task and the length of time that it takes we, we spend a lot of time and money doing waiting for whatever, and we can't get this contractor to finish because we haven't finished the piece of this construction project that we said we were going to do internally. And so uh, I recommended to Mr. Vela and Mr. Vice already, we need to get somebody in here to do the external and to finish out the inside. We, we just got to get it done. Those folks have been waiting for us for almost a year. And now the elevator's still not here, but but they can still move in the without the elevator and at least start as soon as we can get the whole thing completely finished, at least everything else finished out, and just leave the elevator pending till it comes in. Now on the elevator part, sorry. on the elevator part, will the city still uh, give us the CEO? You know, yeah, I I I, uh, I wanted to comment that because. The city of Laredo will not issue us a, a, a certificate of occupancy without the elevator. Uh, it, 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 it's a life safety item that needs to be completed. That's a, that's how it's so, it. So, you know, unfortunately, that, that's what we when are we When are we thinking the, the elevator? So, the elevator had been back backtracked all the way to mid-April, and then we got a new day right now for mid-May. Okay. Uh, so, so, I expect for the elevator to start showing up here in about three weeks. And then the installation would take. The installation will probably take a couple of weeks. We're, we're saying probably by the middle of June, but that'll give us time to finish painting and and finish do the finish out that we're supposed to do internally and and just get it finished. We've already spent a lot of money on this facility, and and the longer we wait, the 
the more money we're wasting. Yeah, more time to the yeah. uh, Mr. Pais, this is the, the ballroom, right? Uh, the bottom, uh, yeah, the top uh, right-hand photograph, it has a stack of uh, yeah. wood flooring on it. That could be the dance room. The dance room. Yeah, yeah that's one of the original my, wood my, my, my only concern with that, and, and this is something, you know, Dr. I mean, is, I'm, it, it looks great, and it's looking beautiful. Um, we need to make sure that whatever equipment they're going to put on it, you know, they're not going to damage the floors because, I mean, this is not just regular, this is not just regular, um, um, what is it, uh, of not wood, uh, just a regular floor that you could just, no, you know, it's on a wood floor. Yeah, it's on a wood floor. So, you know, it's it's, floor. they're it's not like laminates like these over here outside, you know, that you could just replace, you know, quick. This is wood floor and it's really nice. So we need to make sure that we walk the facility with the Imaginarium and let them know that they will be in charge of making sure that they can't, that, I mean, they're going to have to pay for damages if they do on, on, on the floor. And then also on top of that, you need to make sure that they maintain the wood, you know, so that's something that, you know, you just can't, oh, let me mop it and that's it. You know, you're going to have to, exactly. So you're going to have to make sure that we have the proper people with the proper chemical to keep this with the way it is because it's looking beautiful. It is beautiful. Yeah. It's going to be a beautiful. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. We need to make sure, like you said, we're spending a lot of money. And I do agree with you. I think we do need to subcontract the, the we need to subcontract the, the painting for the outside to expedite. But we just need to make sure that we maintain it the way it is. Um, the contracting of painters, do we have a list of people that we've used in the past? Or do we have to RFP? No. We have a list of uh, vendors that we've used before. Uh, we'll we'll go out for uh, quotes and uh, and uh, try to get. Uh, so they won't delay it. Long no. no, no, and and uh, again, the outside work we can be working on it while they're moving in, and so that won't interfere with their operation inside. Uh, right now, the the. What we do need to complete is the inside work. That, we're more worried about the inside. inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they could start the beginning. external part that we can do continuously. It's the inside that's taking forever. What do you think, do, uh, Mr. Pais? Is, how much do you think it'll run for the for the painting of the outside? For the painting, uh, I haven't put really a really number to it. We can probably measure the building, probably narrow it down to a price, and we can bring that information as an update later on. We do have some uh, soffit repairs that also need to be repaired. Yeah, uh, so some wood framing. Well, on that note, if you don't mind, uh, what did the contractor charge for the painting? No, no, or he didn't charge anything. No, no, because we were going to do it internally right. in the house. Currently, currently, the inter paint, uh, tape and float, and all the exterior work, paint wise, was not part of the contract uh, under nine decker. Uh, what are you it, referring to the paint on the inside, inside or the outside? Both. 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 Yeah. So at this point, if we can pass that work on to somebody else for the outside part, we can have that person working on the outside while uh, the contractor finishes everything on the inside. And that will speed up the project uh, a lot. Okay. But the facility is turning out really nice, and it, uh, it's going to be really a, a place to visit. Uh, P24 uh, facility renovations, uh, DPS uh, office uh, project uh, scope has uh, been fully completed. Once this has been completed, DPS uh, people have already occupied the building. Uh, if you have not been in this facility, I, I recommend that you walk over and walk into it. It's, it turned out really nice. Uh, this is a perfect example of what we could be doing to all our historical buildings. Uh, uh, it just uh, changed the exterior and interior of that, so and they're very, very pleased with it. Yeah. I, I remember that you had given us the amount of employees they have, and I don't know, what 39. Were they? 39. They have all these cubicles in there. I, I, mm -hmm. We walked in on Friday as well, and it was like, ah, okay, they covered up all the beautiful floor, but all right, well, I mean, yeah. but they, they it really, they did a nice job on the inside. They did a so, really so nice they, job with the lighting, with the with the floors, with the wall, everything. They and the cubicles are brand new as well? Brand new. Brand new. So they probably came in and saw Are we allowed to go in? 
No, we, we can, can if we can yeah, schedule we, a, a visit. We should. Yeah. We also renovated their basement so they have a secured area for the basement and all their IDF and equipment is down there. Everything turned out very nice. Very nice decision. The uh, PNC Bank donated items in the new pad construction for Fort Mac. We're currently coordinating this uh, this work. Uh, Line Decker uh, is, is ready to commence work. Uh, we do have a plan out already issued out to them on the schematic uh, layout of everything. Uh, and I estimate that the, the pad should be completed by the end of June. Uh, so we're going to make sure that it's completed by before the end of June. So keep in mind that, that the cost of this is being. Um, Funded by, funded by PNC, they're they're paying for it, and and but they wanted us to handle the contracting and the the moving piece and the setting up of the the pad and all that stuff. So we're handling it internally. They're gonna then hand over the check to us. Okay. Now they had said that the, um, one of these pieces is broken. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Correct. So at this time, uh, I have recovered the uh, the three uh, bronze plaques that you see, the one at the statue uh -huh. and the two at the pedestal. The granite uh, plate that you see is uh, is a large granite plate. It's, it is in one piece. It does have an existing crack on it, uh, and it has another one that is about six inches already started going across it. We're going to try to move it in two pieces, uh, but if worst case scenario, it may be moved in in uh, in three pieces. Uh, but we uh, have it scheduled to go ahead and assemble it back together and, and try to work that, that bonding connection between one, one piece and another. And just so that you all are aware, I spoke to um, Ms. Reynosa, who actually designed all these things and, and, and made the bronze statues. That piece was cracked when they installed it. So... Um, it just, it was one of those things that that's when the crack occurred, because he told me, he said that crack's been there, and he actually advised me and said, by the way, there's a crack in it, so you all need to be careful. Yeah. So for the two photos in the middle, are we taking that entire blue block or just? Uh, no, we're uh, we re uh, uh, rebuilding those those pedestals. The, the tile, the blue tile is really damaged and in really bad condition. Um, so we're going to yeah. We're going to go ahead and rebuild them. Are we um, going to put blue tile on them again? No, actually, uh, we're recommending that we're going to we're going to build them out of block and just stucco finish them and paint them. Okay, very nice. Thank you. Yeah. That would be the bag goes for the bench. That's all like, blue tile. Yeah, the benches, the benches are not coming. No, that's why they're blue. Well, um, I've talked to the contractor. We've uh, we've dug up the edge of one bench right now. Um. If I can convince them to try to move one, and it turns out uh, easy enough to move one, we may try two, but we're going to try one. Uh, it's, not, it's not part of the move, but uh, they've they've uh, they've agreed that they will attempt to to try to move one. And and, and PNC told us if you can move them, you can have them. Yeah. All right. So, but we were told that uh, actually i was told by by mr memoir yeah whose father-in-law did all this stuff he said that those benches were built into the ground uh, they, or something like that yeah i think they were formed and then the, the artist that did the tower uh i don't recall his name but uh, he did them there on on site uh, but they're they're really nice they're beautiful they're beautiful so we're gonna we're gonna attempt to try to to try to move on yeah. And if we do happen to move one, we want to stay close to the location right. of the new right. resting place for all these all these uh, items. Okay. The Ruben Garcia facility interior renovations and roofing uh, improvement project. Uh, the interior renovations are currently in progress. The roofing and the rain gutter improvements have been completed. Uh, the, the photograph kind of shows you uh, an actual worker up on the roof uh, doing some of the final work. This photograph was taken uh, by a drone probably about two or three weeks ago. Uh, and I show a couple of elevations. So we are planning as part of the improvements to the paint the facility uh, with the new colors of the college. And the bottom uh, is a hallway of some of that uh, paintwork already uh, in progress. Uh, they're currently working on all the wooden doors. Uh, and as soon as uh, the painter finishes that phase of work, we'll go ahead and get the floors cleaned up, all the rooms cleaned up. 
and we will be waxing uh, the floor at the actual finish. We do currently have the center portion of the uh, the hallway opened up just because we wanted to, to check for any leaks. Uh, this past weekend on Sunday was a good uh, a good chance for us to uh, to check on that. Uh, we did have two spots that they're looking at right now. Uh, we also had some uh, rain penetration uh, on the edge of the wall on the north side, and we think that it was probably because of the high winds, but they're also looking at that same uh, situation as well. It really looks nice inside. We, Very nice. They've done a great job with it. The Lamar Green and Gather Environmental Renovation and Addition Project uh, contractor, uh, GMP, was formally approved uh, by you all uh, last month. Uh, we have held a pre-construction meeting with the contractors, subcontractors, ourselves, and the end users of the facility. Site demolition is scheduled to commence uh, in May, uh, and we currently have construction plans uh, at the City of Radio Building Department for permits. Uh, that is a waiting period. Uh, we're trying to uh, to push that uh, that permit uh, to get it done, uh, but they hope to, to have it soon. Uh, the construction time frame set up for uh, the project is about 18 months. Uh, for me, you know, we have good weather during the different phases of construction. So we will start uh, mobilizing uh, on the site uh, with the contractor uh, in these, these next several weeks. The uh, SGF facility uh, interior and exterior renovation project, architect is Memo Colossos Architects. Uh, currently, uh, the construction plans and specifications are in progress. They are scheduled to be completed uh, at the end of May. Uh, plans and specs will go out for bids in June. And uh, we'll take in bids and bring bids uh, with the awarded contractor hopefully in July uh, to allow the contractor to be prepared uh, or the contractor to be prepared in August and have the contractor mobilized to start work and commence work uh, at the facility in September. We do have also a project going on at the Moore building. Uh, we're working on a covered structure in the open courtyard uh, of the facility. This will be uh, a shaded area for the welding uh, students that take courses there. Uh, we're just trying to improve the, the airflow uh, and, the, and the coolness around that area because it does get hot during the summertime. Um, so we have the architect assigned to the Pluto Architects and we're currently working on schematic plans Mr. Paz, the only thing I'm going to suggest, if we're going to put a cover there, that we we take into consideration uh, when it rains, because if it's anything like what we have on the south campus, it goes this way, well, then now there's two other facilities here, so where's the water going to go? Right. So it's either going to come back in or it's going to go on the other on the outside and so we need to make sure that the structure is either wide enough to make sure the water falls on the outside of the two buildings right. or that it runs in a different direction but it doesn't get stuck there and it doesn't fall back in to the students so currently right now the two buildings that you see there side by side with the open area in the middle uh, those buildings slope outward uh, away from the interior uh, the new structure will sit high enough to allow air to, to, to go through the, the space. So that water that will fall over the new structure will fall onto the building through gutters uh, and downspouts and then relieve itself on either side of the building and then drain out and not drain the water uh, well, inside the cool. area. So we've, we've thought of that. <laughs> so we're working on, uh, working on that setup. Uh, we have some old facilities that are being recommended for demolition due to life safety. Uh, one of them is the old bakery building and P7 and 8. Uh, currently, we have uh, the architect reviewing this, Colossal of Architects, uh, and proposals and, uh, and documentations are currently uh, in progress right now. Uh, so we'll bring you this uh, later on as an update as soon as we, uh, we have everything coordinated and ready for, uh, for demolition. On this uh, one, on this one, will be it doesn't fall into the historical. Uh, no, we had a uh, uh, historical people come onto campus uh, when we had them over at uh, at Ishiga and correct me if I'm wrong, Emma, but this was not listed under the historical. No. Uh, it's they're, they're not. Campus, it, they're, they're not. Okay. 
So we're going to have photograph interior and exterior of the building uh, for our records and send them all that information. Uh, so but that either it. way, it, 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 it's not, it, it's a risk to even. Yeah, we currently have a fence off uh, just because, you know, the walls are probably not structurally stable. Yeah. Uh, so we don't want any uh, any visitors or staff or students uh, around in general. All right, when do you predict uh, that you'll... You'll have it knocked out. I think uh, probably, uh, if we're, what do you think, we'll maybe uh, a couple of months we'll be ready? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You can give them a little bit of information. Uh, Memo Cavazos, for the record. Um, so we need to do an asbestos survey. That's going to take two to three weeks. The, um, the structural and the architectural analysis shouldn't take very long i would say um for the field work a couple of days and and for the report you just need to compile everything at the end so i'll say four weeks for the for the the um analysis portion then from then on you're gonna have to hire a demolition contractor there's no um i guess antique things in in that building that could be I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. Mr. Ankhead, when I got here, the only thing I told him was put a fence around it because somebody's going to get hurt. Uh, uh, that was, there were two facilities that were falling, and I said, we don't even have them fenced. So that was the first things we did. Uh, Mr. Spada and I walked uh, with Mr. Vela, and, and we put up the fences right away. I have not been inside that building. I don't know that anybody's been inside that building. Um, no. <laughs> I, I really don't. I don't think anybody's been in there. Uh, but I will tell you that if you look at the still, you can see those cement stills on the bottom. Mm -hmm. You, I could have put my hand through it between that and the casita. So, well, I, I did that when I got here. And I said, well, if I can do it, that means that, and I thought about doing it, that means somebody else is going to do it. So, yeah. Um, it, it is a huge risk for us, and it's not on the. I'm surprised that it's not on the historical listing of buildings, but it's not. Good. So, um, well, I mean, I'm just saying, if there's any. I would have loved to have saved that building only because of its history, but it's going to take us a good $5 million to fix that. We, uh, we will make sure that there is. Nothing of value on the inside. Yeah, that, that's my only that's my only question. You know, just I don't know. There might be some thing that it's not sure. value. It's just right. uh, the, the 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 old you know thing that maybe we could just yeah. put somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. So we uh so this this facility here is even worse shape. Really? Uh, this facility is a P7 and 8. This is another one that we're recommending for demolition. They also did inspect this building, uh, and we're able to demolish it if we, if we choose to. Uh, this building is completely empty. Uh, it has been hit by two different storms in two different summers. Uh, some of the fire uh, stacks have, have actually collapsed, uh, but we do have a fence around it right now. Uh, we did walk into this building and it's in uh, pretty bad shape. I don't know. I think I wanted to walk it in. Okay. Uh, but it is uh, kind of falling apart. So we're also going to recommend for demolition. So we have a uh, update for security surveillance and fiber optic line upgrade for the campus. And I'll uh, do this for uh, Albert Chavez to go ahead and give you all uh, an update. Good evening. Uh, for the record, Albert Chavez, Associate Vice President for Information Technology. Uh, just wanted to give you an update on these projects for the South Campus uh, Security Camera uh, Project. We're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. We're very close to the end. Uh, one of the things that's holding us back uh, from completing the project is we have a power issue on the light poles on, on the exterior. Um, the low voltage, the 110 voltage uh, cabling is not in good shape. So facility is working with a contractor to get an estimate um, so we can get those cameras installed. The equipment's already there. It just doesn't have power. Um, that, those lines were damaged in a prior construction project. 
So they're they're uh, we're getting those quotes to to get that finalized, and that's what's holding us up from crossing that finish line. The exterior cameras in the parking lot holes. Uh, the other project that that's uh, also very near to completion, the South Campus Audiovisual Project, uh, which we had budgeted for 45 classrooms during spring break. The company was here all week and they completed 28 classrooms. The remaining classrooms, the equipment had not arrived. Uh, so we have a total of 17 classrooms still pending that we're looking at having the equipment uh, by late May or early June so we can wrap that up. Uh, the last item on the list here is the fiber optic upgrades for the main campus and for the south campus. All the um, uh, equipment or the material has arrived. It's stored here in the campus. The contractor already started uh, working throughout the campus. They started uh, on April the 10th, and this is uh, this project is estimated to complete in, in three months. So we're looking late uh, July, um, August. And those were the, the, the three projects that we have that are IT related that are on, on the bond, list of the bond projects. Okay. That concludes our presentation. If anybody has any answers or questions, I'm going to give you answers on. Any questions for members of the committee? No, sir. Okay. Thank okay. you, Mr. Price. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Travis. Uh, all right. It is 621. And second. Motion second. We are adjourned at 621. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.